when we get started, which is going to be pretty soon, we'll go around the room and introduce each other so everybody knows who is here. <laughs> Good evening, my name is Tom Mariom, I'm Chairman of the Public Works Committee and with that I'd like to call our meeting to order at uh, 6 o'clock on uh, November 5th, 2013. Uh, we're in the City Hall uh, conference, first floor conference, conference room. Uh, with that, I guess uh, as we get started, I'll just go around the room for people to introduce themselves. Mary and Hope City Council. Dave Lasper, City Engineer. Joe, I extend as an engineer. Larry Koopman, Lampert Land Associates. John Evenson, Village of Buren. John Lee, Advanced Disposal. Scott Kellogg. Nathaniel Suda for the Daily Tribune. All right, and with that, uh, we'll go to item number two, Dave, and that's to review and recommend approval of the bids for the 2014 crushing contract. Yeah, I hand it out to, to the committee, the uh, plan holders. Um, for the contract, we got we got four bids. The first bid is from the Kramer Company LLC from Plain, Wisconsin. Their bid is in the amount of $153,630. $153,630. Uh, the next bid is from Earth Incorporated from Arpin, Wisconsin. And their bid is $118,000. $160, $118,160. Uh, the next bid is from Milwaukee Materials of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Their bid is $154,500. $154,500. And the final bid that we received is from Michael's Materials from Brownsville, Wisconsin.
They did like it. Yeah, they did it pretty good. Maybe they didn't. Oh, oh no. finally, 121250 $121,250. And, oh, Earth. Earth Incorporated is the parent role. Mm -hmm. So we would review the bids and if there's no errors or omissions um, contingent on that, we would recommend uh, awarding the contract to Earth Incorporated. Or Earth. I'll so move. I'll second that. Uh, we have a motion and second to award the uh, contract to Earth Incorporated at Arpen. Uh, any questions of anybody? Hearing none, committee will vote. All, uh, all those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have. Item number three is a request from Kurt Subert of Integrity Grading and Excavating, 605 Grossman Drive, Schofield, Wisconsin, for a variance on the noise ordinance to work on the First Street North reconstruction project between. 7 a.m. and uh, not later. Is that supposed to be Dave than 7 p.m.? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Not later. Not later. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is pretty much standard for our contractors when they come in. I don't think they'll because of daylight, and, they, and they'll be finishing up. Oh, well, probably in the next couple of weeks for this year's work. It'll be for next year's work. Uh, they like to start the machinery up at six o'clock in the morning. And then a lot of times they'll work past seven because there's light. So in the past, the contractors have asked for the a variance when they're reconstructing a street. So, so, they, so that, that shouldn't have been not correct. in there. Yeah. It is correct. The it is correct the way yeah. it is. Yeah, late, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So is there a, a time limit? I mean, you sit, let me see. It says later than 7 p.m. So it would be up to 9 you could set the time if you wanted to, you know, not I don't before know. 6 a.m. or not later than 9 p.m. I'm just wondering about the neighborhood. And, you know, I would think you want some limit. Yeah, typically you can, in summer, it's light, uh, like quarter after five. Yeah. So I would think, I would think you wouldn't want anybody starting before six. Right. So the 7 a.m. may be a good, good, but if we want to look at later at night, 
if they if they wanted to. Yeah. Uh, I, I guess hate to have it open ended. Right. You know, maybe eight o'clock, eight thirty, nine. I don't know. But yeah, it's usually dark by eight thirty. Yeah. yeah. Do we say nine? Yeah, that would be because they'll probably yeah, finish it. Plenty. Yeah. Yeah. So no later than nine. No later than nine. And mm -hmm. you want them to start at seven or earlier? Doesn't matter to me. I guess. No. no. If they have to get it done. <laughs> yeah. 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 The, their work six or six thirty probably be a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Six thirty. Maybe six thirty. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the motion then. Yeah, I, okay. I have a motion to have it changed to the designated times we talked about. 6.30, 6 to 9, 9, 9, 9 p.m. Okay, I'll second it. All right, uh, we have a motion and a second to, uh, for variance of the North noise ordinance uh, to work on the First Street North reconstruction project. Uh, the time would be not before 6.30 a.m. and not after 9 p.m. Uh, any questions by anybody? That should only be for about a month since the weather's coming, maybe a month. Yeah, the, they probably won't use it because of the darkness. Um, they'll be done in a couple of weeks, shut down for the winter. Okay. By November 22nd, they're supposed to be shut down for the winter, and then they'll start again, weather permitting, end of April. So, and this, mm -hmm. so how long is this going to last? Is this just for the first street project? Okay. It, it'll last. It'll be next year, probably April to July. He hasn't come out with his next year's schedule, so okay. I'm assuming he'll be done with the roundabout by July of 2014. Okay, so it's up to July. Right. Yeah. So did you want that in your motion up to July? Well, it just yeah, this is new for me, and it just seems like... You know, well, I, I, this is really project-specific, so once the first three project's done, these are on a town contractor. That, your yeah, your variance is done. Yeah. yeah. But they have to finish the project, so regardless right. if it's first July or the thirtieth July. Right. Yeah. Right. This is just once the project's done, yeah. your variance is done. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions or anything? Hearing none, committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed. I have it. Item four. Uh, I think my our guests are here. Uh, and that's a request from the village of Beeren to obtain approval from the city of Wisconsin Rapids to install a forced main sanitary sewer in the 48th Street right away from the Canadian National Railroad south to Commerce Drive and on Commerce Drive from 48th Street North to 44th. Okay, uh, last meeting we had met just for, for informational purposes. We were talking about a 48th Street connection, but uh, we went through the numbers of our existing business is and our proposed needs in the industrial park, and, and we couldn't allow a connection on 48 because that would take away too much of our future capacity. So we met staff-wise, and we... And we beer and that staff wise are recommending a connection point at 44th Street where we have a where the 21 inch sewer is up to and that we have adequate capacity for our needs and beer and at that point so that that's the change from the last time and and we'd recommend staff wise to allow them to put their sanitary force force main in the right of way um, and then there, we have to upgrade our, our sanitary sewer uh, treatment agreement with the Village of Beer, and that will be through the Wastewater Commission for, for actually connecting and, and bringing in their sewage from their, their industrial park and the development up there. And uh, John and Larry are here if you've got any questions. And do you have anything to add, Larry, John? Uh, no, just uh, that we've been working with uh, both engineering staff and the mayor and uh, city attorney for the last month and went going over options and it was uh, staff's recommendation, as Dave said, for reasons that have come up in the last couple of years that uh, 
we now need to go to 44th Street. So uh, we're revising our plans accordingly and we're going to be running Forest Main along the west right away of 48th Street now uh, to leave the east side open for the city's future gravity extension and we'll run the Forest Main along the north side of the uh, in the green space north of the curb and gutter on Commerce to just before 44th Street where we'll uh, put in a short stretch of gravity sewer with a metering manhole with a Palmer Bolus plume to measure the flows at that point before it dumps into the 21 inch. So uh, we're in, uh, in agreement with this change that's necessary and we're moving forward along those lines. When will it take place? I mean, uh, I'm thinking that that work, it, it's going to depend on winter conditions. Our contractor, or think, who you were just uh, recommending award if your crushing fit to, is going to be starting their directional boring on the 50 or Highway 54 section beginning November 18th. They figure it's going to take them about six weeks or for the rest of the year to finish up that 54 segment. And you know, depending on weather conditions, it'll probably dictate whether that means they're done for the winter. And then I don't know whether they'll continue down Huffman Road and into the business park uh, with that segment or whether they'll jump back over to 40, 48th Street and Commerce Drive. But it very likely may not be till next spring. Yeah. Let's just... Anybody else? Any questions or anything? With the business park there, how much um, are they going to be the sanitary sewer system going to hold? From the business park, you know, if they would take it, that whole area would get built up. Um, the numbers we've got from from Larry is we'd have adequate capacity in the, in the 21 inch, but that's why we've moved it from the 48. Mm -hmm. we, I'll speak to that maybe a little bit. The, um, again, we've been planning this for for several years, and, mm -hmm. and uh, initially worked with Mike Weiler on, on the initial plans and, and Mike was helpful in, in allowing us to get that process started. And certainly, um, you know, I, I do want to speak to the fact that uh, your engineering staff, I think, did a very thorough job of investigating options. Uh, and certainly, this is not our first option that we looked at. It. In fact, you know, we did a different option with our construction company. But in, Again, we're going through the change process, but again, in the last several weeks, I think the engineering uh, staff did a nice job of looking at that initial option, and we certainly understand the necessity for the city to retain uh, what existing capacity remains in that 15-inch interceptor, and we understand their desire for us to hook to where that interceptor converts to 21 inches, so that uh, our our uh, our system would stress the remaining capacity in the 15 inch. In terms of the overall capacity, we anticipate that uh, the entire TID 3, I'm sorry, the, the entire TID 3 area, which is both uh, commercial development and residential development, the business park and Bridgewater, um, could contribute up to 100,000 um, gallons per day. And our Current, our current flow is averaging under 100,000 per day. And the current agreement that we have with the, with the Wastewater Commission uh, allows us 353,000 per day. So we're well under today, you know, we're only using, we're using less than a third. Mm -hmm. yeah. And this is gonna add possibly another less than a third. So um, we certainly uh, uh, support the process of revising our agreement and myself and Sue Schill will be working on that. I think the agreement has, has functioned very well for the city and Buren. I think we've been we've been good partners to one another with the Wastewater mm -hmm. Treatment Commission, and it's good. look forward for that to continue. Again, we're really not looking for additional capacity within the agreement, but certainly it's time the agreement is in excess of 20 years old, and we need to revise it now that the plant has been expanded again, and there's additional contributors to the to the system. So, um, so that's a, a Mary and a long answer to your question. But, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah, fine. Yeah. yeah. 
So we're 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 good with the connection point and the methodology of getting it there, and certainly understand the need for the change and support that. You know, we want to do everything we can as a community to to support future development in Wisconsin Rapids, mm -hmm. and that's been reciprocal in the past. And we appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. yeah, thank you. Have you had any action out there in the business park? Or? Sure, we've, there's been some some mild interest, but again, um, we haven't really pushed the yeah. marketing of it because. We haven't really been able to. Now we're starting to see when we'd be able to accept tenants, so we can maybe push that marketing process a little bit now in the near future. Uh, the first phase of business park development is going to be about 85 acres of about 200 acres available for development in that, in that two district. Will that make a difference with that intersection on you where the state is talking about? Uh, that intersection <clears throat> that's been a big delay on the project absolutely uh, you know, we last time before we came to the city here a couple months ago uh, the last time we had met with city engineering staff was January of 2012 we had just received approval for the intersection the main uh, entrance to the business park mm -hmm. 72nd Street North right across from Oldenburg Farms right. and, uh, several months later the state received uh, hazard elimination funding for the federal government for that 54 and U interchange. And so again, they, they took away our approval until they figured out what they were gonna do there. I'm not sure they really figured out what they were gonna do there, but one of the options that they were looking at, they wanted to make sure it wasn't gonna conflict with 72nd Street. Yeah. So in December 23rd, or 2012, they, that, back to Buren and said, yeah, you can go ahead with your intersection project. So that kind of delayed us and then we're kind of in this fast forward mode trying to get everything put together. So the 72nd Street intersection may not be there forever. You know, and yeah. we've had to accept the fact that 20, 30 years down the road, if traffic again grows on Highway 54, that uh, the traffic at the County U intersection may eventually warrant an overpass and that's the ultimate end-all fix that the DOT envisions but of course that will be driven by by safety needs and traffic counts and, and we're nowhere near that today yeah. so the, what they've granted us is a temporary intersection we hope that the temporary is a few decades long yeah. at least yeah. let somebody else it. deal with it exactly right. but we're prepared in the future if necessary if if that does become a reality and certainly if it if it becomes a reality it's because of safety and we have to support that mm -hmm. that then uh, our property would be accessed off of County U and Hoffman Road instead. Oh, that's good. It's been quite a process, uh, a lengthy process. But, Definitely. But again in, in terms of the public the interest of public safety on the corridor one that albeit reluctantly we have to support. Thank you. Anybody else any questions or comments? Hearing none, committee, any, would you like to make a decision here? Motion? I make a motion to accept this proposal uh, of the sewage chain. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, go along with the engineering's recommendation and Buren's acceptance of uh, what the plan is to be here for the uh, industrial park that uh, they're building and hopefully to get tenants in there. So uh, before we hold any questions by anybody, Hearing none, committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Uh, thank, thank you. you thank you. Right? And we'll certainly make ourselves available at the council meeting on the 18th as well. So. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Item five uh, request to extend the present recycling agreement with advanced disposal for additional six months. Past 1231 13 on a month to month basis. Well, our
recycling agreements are going to be ending at the end of the year, and I haven't been directly involved in it, but I understand um, the street department is looking, working with the mayor and looking at po possible changes, commingling all the recyclables, so they, or not, I don't know, I don't know exactly, but they, that's why they'd like to extend the agreement past December, so they got a chance to study the ramifications of changing their recycling pickup. Are they looking at, I guess, us to um, extend it six months and it go month by month, I guess, or is it, it are we just give it a month to month for six months? <laughs> well, if John's that makes here any from advance, yeah. advanced disposal. If, if uh, that'll work, advanced okay. disposal really has no concerns with extending the current contract. Um, what we're interested in is um, the as the city explores their alternatives for, for the recycling they're picking up, um, I don't believe that at any point the city is looking at outsourcing that. Obviously, we would be um, be available for any consults on that or uh, available if that was where the city was looking at going. I don't think that's where they're they're looking at going. Um, but uh, if the city is looking at changing the their the way they pick up their the recyclables right now, it's the the, the cardboard and paper are picked up separate from the the containers. Um, that's something that we want to to be involved in, know of, uh, and it we we accept all the city's material basically for free, and then we we make sure that it gets gets recycled, and we have the transportation costs, handling costs involved with that to get it get it moved. Um, and obviously, if if the material comes in uh, all commingled instead of the uh, fiber separate from the the single stream uh, or the commingle uh, the containers. Uh, that's going to change our process, and the city is quite a quite a volume of uh, of material that we they dump at our recycling facility and that we, we handle. Um, one of the other things I'd, I'd like to make note of is that all of the fiber from the city of Wisconsin Rapids is currently picked up on um, basically clean or pure, uh, separated from the other other materials, and that baled and uh, goes directly to Carenzo. So it never leaves the city of Wisconsin Rapids, um, which is it's good for the city, it's good for us, and it's good for Carenzo. Um, and if that material is picked up in a, in a single stream where all the, all the material is mixed together, it will leave town. It will, and there will be processing costs, there will be transportation costs, and uh, some of that material won't be able to be used by Carenzo. So I, I don't know where the city is with, with their with their plans and what they're looking at, um, but that is an, another uh, you know, business or another person that may want to be be involved in the discussions because obviously they like to source as much material as close as they can, and that's best for the environment. It's best for everyone involved if um, we're not shipping stuff all over the place when it's needed right here in town. So, but as far as the six month extension, uh, advanced disposal is more than happy. Um, to, to help with that and do a, an extension for six months. I think it. I think it's a month by month up to six months. That's what I was wondering. Yep. Okay. I don't have a problem really with yeah, either yeah, way, yeah. but month by month uh, yeah. with maximum six is, is fine uh, with me. Um, That's I, fine with me too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I just had some point, I guess, uh, and I'll uh, try to talk to the mayor and that too, but uh, Dave and Joe, if you could get input made or information, I guess, more of where we're looking at heading, so I guess we're not, as a committee, caught not knowing uh, what what we want to do yet. We right. find out. Yeah. Right. If there, so if there I would like just... us to not necessarily be involved in actual no. doing it, but to, to hey, from the city's part uh, for the committee to know which way we're headed. And, and we're always available, um, obviously, if, if you pick a different type of uh, way of collecting your recyclables, you're still going to need the outlet for them, and we're obviously available for that. It may have to change from the city dumps for free and has no cost to get rid of their, their material to, well, now we have to transport all of it uh, to, get it, to get it separated and sorted. 
and you add those extra processing costs. So it's, you know, there's the ease of recycling and there's picking up in um, in a all in one container, but then that comes with a cost on the backside too. So before right, and, and I think whatever route we would the city would like to go is uh, obviously have discussions with you for your input of what you know, just like what you said. Uh, we could change something that may look better to us, but it. I'll make the motion then to go by, um, let's see here, uh, an additional six months, but do it by a month to month basis, up to six months. So a month, month to month, uh, maximum of six, yeah. and mm -hmm. I guess at that point, mm -hmm. we have, have to come back here if we're yeah. not done. I would second it. A motion a second to, uh, Go with the agreement uh, on a month to month basis with a maximum of six months, and it ends at the end of the year, so that would take us, uh, could take us through uh, June. July. Yeah. yeah, it's the first of July. So, uh, any questions by anybody? Comments? But in the meantime, we're going to find out what's going on with this. Yeah, I, I would yeah. like to, yeah. you know, to see yeah. which way, you know, we're looking at heading. Mm -hmm. And obviously, at some point in time, they'll have to be involved. Well, the agreement is unless you guys are going to build a recycling yeah. facility. Yeah. <laughs> you know. yeah, the agreement isn't with, with just one entity. So yeah. You yeah. need another one. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, if there's nothing uh, else, the uh, committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Thank you. I have no problem. I have one other quick question. Um, we have done the, the leachate extension. And do you, does anyone here know offhand how long the city uh, agreed to the month to month leachate extension? Because now I know we've been working with Joe, and we're going to have our new meter in place spring, summer of next year. Because we, when we had talked, it was going to be a, uh, a budgeting thing for us. We're going to be spending $30,000 on a meter. I just want to make sure on the city side that we're still good with the month to month. And I know we, we had talked about that, and that was the understanding, just that that's formal of into next year. Yep. So I don't know if that needs to be in on minutes for another meeting, or I just want to, if someone can look back in the minutes and figure out how long we had, had agreed upon that. I, mean, was, I, I don't think we did a time. We just, um, because of everything we were studying, we you left it out on. of the, okay. the, the solid waste agreement. We are, we are working on it. We are working No, and I know you've been yeah. working with, called me and worked with Rick, and yeah. um, we've got our plan in place, and I know you guys are working on your contract then uh, for the um, wastewater. So as long as, I just want to make sure there was, all of a sudden we look back and like, oh, that was only extended until July or something. I guess my personal goal is to have it, have it put together by the end of the year. Hopefully. Okay. So, okay. Very good. You guys all have right. a great Thank evening. Thank you again. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and that was item six, and that's amend the school zones due to signing plan updates at the following locations. A is Prospect Street from 8th uh, Street North to 200 feet east of 11th Street North. That's what it become. Uh, and B, Oak Street from 6th Street uh, instead of 7th to 200 feet east of 11th. Yeah, they, this is our ongoing program. I think this is the last schools that we're going to be doing. We're matching our school zones to the recommended specifications for signing for schools at, from the Department of Transportation. So we've done them, well, I think through the last five, six months, we bring in one or two schools, and I believe this is our last, okay. our last update. Yeah, we have had quite a few. I Right. I can't wait till we get done. With it, so. <laughs> By June of 2014, we have to have all of our regulatory signs changed over to new signs for the new reflectivity uh, requirements of the federal government. So that that that's what spurred this on. And then meeting with the DOT, they provided us with their their standard specifications for school zones. So we have a lot of signs out there. So we're. 
trying to eliminate signs and put them in all on a standardized standardized uh, method. Well, you, it looks like you're ahead of a deadline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Okay. Uh, well, I'll move. Uh, do we need a motion really to do this? Yeah, it's okay. an ordinance, so okay. we, we would need a motion. All right. That's, yeah, that's true. I'll move that we uh, go along with the uh, two changes that are on our list here tonight. I would second it. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve the uh, amending these two school zones, uh, the signing plan. Uh, there's no further discussion or questions. Committee will vote. All those in favor, respond by aye. 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 Opposed, ayes have. Seven, uh, item seven, to remove school zones and crossings due to signing plan updates at the following locations. Uh, A, Baker Street from 100 feet west of 8th Street North to 100 feet east of 8th Street North. And B, East Grand Avenue from 100 feet west of 11th Street to 100 feet east of 11th Street and C, 8th Street North from 100 feet north of Baker Street to Baker Street. Okay, uh, one thing I noticed I had a error in there. There is no crossings in there, so they're just school zones. I use a template for oh, the last. Yeah, yeah. The, the, these are school zones. Um, the, the specifications are school zones need to be within 250 feet of a school, and these are quite a ways from any school. There'll still be school crossings there, but the the recommendations is not uh, is not to put the school zones any further than 250 feet from a school, and that's why we're removing these. We've removed a number around the city through through the last few months. I'm just curious, you know, what, why would it be 100 feet west of 8th Street to 100 feet east? But why wouldn't they have a oh, 100 feet west and east? You know, yeah, I don't know. I mean, these have been put together through the years, and they, they, sometimes there's errors get in there that we don't catch. It. Okay, uh, you know, just yeah. Well, if you look at the because you the saw last it. one, it's mm -hmm. 100 feet north to Baker Street. So they were trying. I guess they were trying to cover the intersection with a school zone, yeah. but that's not the recommended. Because you still have traffic west of Baker. You know that. Mm -hmm. So I wonder why mm -hmm. it just switched it. <laughs> so well, I guess if that's yeah, it, this would remove it all. Okay. The state is telling us to do this. How much is it costing us? Actually, we're we're saving money because we have to change these signs out anyway by June 2014. So we're trying to eliminate unneeded, uh, unnecessary Sign signs. Down. So this is actually. In the long run, we'll save the city money because we're going on the method, uh, an inventory method. Every seven years, we change out our signs to make sure we have the reflectivity requirements. So, any way we can reduce the number of signs will save the city money. Just fell the right time. Yeah, that's good. All right, committee, I'd entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I'd second it. Motion a second uh, to approve the removing school zones uh, due to signing plan updates uh, at the three locations here that uh, I read earlier. If there's no further questions or discussion, committee will vote. All those in favor respond by aye. Aye. Opposed, ayes have it. Number eight is review the proposed 2014 public works construction budget. Dave and Joe, you want to just give us a little overview, I guess, of uh, what we're looking at and as we go through the budget process here over the next few weeks. Uh, Dave, you want to Okay, um, this is the proposed um, 2014 public works construction budget um, 
that I handed out. Uh, I'll just quickly go through. Uh, street construction is the main the main budget, and then there's items. Usually, when we reconstruct the street, there's always the water main, um, storm sewer, and sanitary. So they'd be in the in subsequent budget sheets. Um, but our projects that we're proposing for 2014 are uh, 10th Street, Peach Street to Saratoga that we've had a hearing on already, and that was approved. Um, that's a street reconstruction. Uh, I believe the water main was undersized. That was the, the reason for the reconstruction. We finished 9th Street this year. Um, 10th Street was pushed back from last year, was in the preliminary budget. Uh, we had Oak Street from 3rd to 4th. It's in bad shape. And then 4th from Oak to East Grand. Those two are kind of a project together uh, in our downtown area. 17th Avenue, West Grand to the uh, former Green Bay and Western Railroad, we've had, uh, we'll be working in conjunction with Wood County Highway. They, they are, are responsible for the center 24 feet and then the city the rest. We have um, storm sewer that we've been watching there for many years mm -hmm. that we're really concerned about that we gotta replace. Kavine Avenue, 14th to 15th place, that's a, that's a developer um, SK Construction is building more houses in there. We've, we've built a number of streets in that low Rosewood subdivision. And this would be an additional uh, area in there. Um, I know they leave uh, the alley and the Dixon parking lot were in the preliminary budget, but when when they came to review the budget, they, those are removed. Um, City Hall parking lot, the police lot in back. We've had that on our radar for a number of years to expand the amount of parking in the back for the for the police department and reconstruct the lots. Uh, the lots are 35 years old and they're showing wear. So um, from when it was built. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and, it's, and then the Centralia parking lot that was built in 1988 so that's 25 years old. That made it into the budget this year for uh, pavement will be uh, milled up into gravel and then a, a new overlay on it. Um, concrete pavement patching, that that's the 50,000 is for blow ups. Uh, we've the last few years we've been using our own city crews instead of contracting that amount out and we're evaluating the cost. So far it looks pretty good. And then the last one is um, the expressway concrete pavement patching should bring us from, or just past 12th Street in both lanes, it would bring us to 16th Street, and that would complete our our patching of the expressway. We'll head out to uh, 25th Avenue, I think, in 2015. Uh, try to keep ahead of the concrete pavements, but like Highway 54 and Highway 34 are now showing signs of we're getting some potholes out there mm -hmm. so we're gonna start the schedule on that. Yep. I just wanted to add real quick um, as we move through the budget if you look at the like 2011, 2012, uh, 2013 numbers some of them fluctuate a lot like this particular one for street construction they look like big increases but just the the selection of the project dictates um, you know how much of each one there's going to be. So sometimes some years street construction might be a, a much larger percentage of the project cost, whereas water main may be less or sanitary less, storm less, or something like that. They fluctuate a lot depending on the type of the project that we're doing. So in, in this particular budget, there's, there's actually a lot of street costs. So let me. What are these? The ones with the dash after it means they're not going to be done? Right. They were the originally proposed from the engineering department, and then when they they went through the budget, the fin financing, finance, finance, finance at their meetings that they had. Okay, right. yeah. See, I'd like to have the alley of Sherman to Mead because of the potholes in that alley, and then the, the garbage truck. I mean, that came up at that last meeting. The garbage truck can't get around that tree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And it's going on the lawns, and so 
how do we get how can a person get that back in and I guess they would have to go to the Finance and Property Committee and request it. you off the top of your head, Dave, uh, how much that was, that alley? Um, bunch of them for? I don't remember. Uh, let me see. Uh, 100 and... Should be up here. Isn't it 124,000? Huh? It sounds about right. Yeah, the, the problem with the alley is there's no storm drainage in there, so we've got to get storm drainage your own. Um, off of Chestnut, I think we were going to come around Chestnut, were we? Yeah, it was, we were going to attempt to try to get it down Chestnut and over to 4th Street. Um, there's storms on 4th Street and Down Street, but nothing on any of the east-west streets in between, so we'd have to run something down in one of those over to 4th or Elm. I guess, yeah, one, I guess for, if it, if we or an individual would want something to be looked at again, and you know, give it contact uh, finance committee for another look at it. Um, that is a, a lot of money that they, that that they took out. Uh, and there's uh, sometimes maybe trade offs of put something in, but then they'll take something else out. So. Yeah. Yeah. One, one issue they had was this huge tree. It was blocking yeah. a portion of it. So even if that tree was removed, yeah. you know, and then by and by time for a year, you wouldn't have that problem. Because that was the problem that came up. Um, and the condition of the, the potholes and the gravel and, and stuff like that. So I guess going back to the finance committee then. But I understand that's quite a bit of money for an alley. Yeah. You could, or the committee could take it back to finance. They're not going to just bring it. Me or the look at it themselves, I guess. But uh, or at, or when the budget's presented, things are brought up then too. But that becomes harder to change yeah. at that point in time. Or we could do the the. Uh, I, I we don't have a design on it, but I assume the tree would be in our uh, at least partially slope there. slopes that would. We could do some preliminary stuff. You know, we could just explore it. Yeah, explore And then buy it time for a year if that's necessary. Because right. I realize you only have so much money. Right. You know, that you can allocate and then you have to prioritize. Um, so, I mean, if I guess what would be the process that we could follow from here to explore it? We could options. bring it, take a look at it, and bring it back at the next meeting. All right. um, I can, we can talk to Tim, our finance director, and so where, where we want to go with that because it probably would be just a recommendation from this committee to, to the street department take the tree out, yeah. and patch, patch the alley. That's that's it would come out of this committee, and, and then we could look at temporarily. It. Temporarily, yeah. and then next year's budget, look at a reconstruction. Try to yeah, really get start. put it back in. Right. I would like that happens. because at that hearing, we had quite a few people from that area, and I think we left them with the idea that it may occur. And I understand yeah. that, this, but they don't know that. Well, yeah. <laughs> and then, so if we could just explore what options we have on a temporary basis so that when uh, we can maybe entertain the idea, if not this year, next year. But satisfy some of their needs that they have now. Mm -hmm. you know. I would like to see that the Dixon parking lot and the City Hall parking lot be done before the Police Department parking lot. Um, that Dixon parking lot over here is a, it's a shame. Yeah, the, the understanding. The condition of, is. Yeah, yeah the, the understanding I've got is um, they want to hold off on it because that our understanding is that people that own the building next to it are looking in the future to sell their building and we don't make a lot of money off the parking lots that yeah. we didn't want to reconstruct it until we find out uh, what happens with the sale of that building. Maybe the new owner, if it's sold, would want the Dixon lot because our revenue from all we got now is we don't have any more yeah. parking meters. All we get is parking permits and mm -hmm. it's, it's very little. So that that's the reason they they took it out of this year's budget. 
is they don't want to spend all the money to reconstruct it and then end up selling it or something. Yeah, so, because it's really... Yeah, it's in poor shape. Yeah. It's just that it's in flux right now, and that's why it was held off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I could see that before the police park, uh, parking. I like the Centralia parking lot. That's really bad. Right. That's a lot of traffic. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with, with the elderly, you got to make sure. Potential that injury or something. Or something. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, uh, Dave or um, Joe? I can look through the rest of them quick. Um, the next one will be traffic control. Um, a couple of intersections that we still need to change from incandescent bulbs to LEDs, 8th and Coon, um, 6th and West Grand. Um, then the next item that's in is the uh, 10th and West Grand, an LED flasher that was part of the West Grand um, pedestrian safety study. The recommendation is put an additional flasher on the, we have the two overhead lights. This mm -hmm. would be an additional flasher on the vertical poles. And then the last one, detector loops at Highway 54 and County W. We keep getting complaints. Um, the design, for one reason or another, didn't put large enough uh, detector loops on the would be the westbound approach. And people, we put signs there, stop here, but they always, for some reason or another, they'll stop back a half a car length and the, the loop can't, doesn't know you're there, yeah. so it never changes. And then we get complaints that it's broke. So we're, yeah. we're gonna add um, additional detectors in there to get rid of that problem. Uh, and then let's see, the next. Well, water main is basically all the projects that I just mentioned, and so sanitary sewer, and storm sewer is the same. Um, then we come to highway, highway rehabilitation, that's the 8th and Chestnut, 8th and East Grand, that was the, the hazard elimination projects that we uh, just approved that would be a portion of the, the amount that um, would be the city's 10% share in, mm -hmm. in 2014. Um, 2nd Avenue Roundabout Expressway speed limit, the state is still studying that. They didn't think we would, we the city would need to expend any funds in uh, 2014. Uh, First Street Overlook, uh, that's, um, I don't know if you want to explain how, how that's involved in there, Joe. We did the uh, design on that. Yeah, there's, there's um, landscaping for the roundabout that's included in there. Um, there's also an overlook where the uh, three-speed electrical transmission tower at that spot there. So there'd be a, an overlook there with some additional landscaping, a place to, to uh, sit down and Enjoy the, the river um, and then included in that also is the cost for replacing the railing from Jackson Street along the uh, Mead Rapids View Park up to the Overlook so that whole park area there would get a new railing as well. And then, then the how's our wall there? underneath there <laughs> along the river? There's portions of it that could use some repair some tough pointing and I mean structurally I think it's fine right we we did a boat ride with the fireman was that spring to inspect it yeah I think it's a year ago already yeah but at, at some point we're gonna have to do something before right. it gets too bad and mm -hmm. it's a major job <laughs> we, we got a tentative number but that I don't know how good it was about 400,000 from our consultant when we were uh, the first street consultant, um, we just asked him because we had uh, transportation enhancement money. That is that a possibility? And he gave us a number. So, but I don't know how firm that is, but it, it mainly tuck pointing. Oh, there's some stones that have fallen out, but it's mainly tuck pointing on the wall. But we got to keep track of it. 
Oh. Well, it takes a beating with the high water yeah, that goes right. through there. So that's why you wonder if there's money available to the federal government or state because of the river, and, you know, some program that they might have. You just wonder. Yeah, we haven't found any yet, but we keep looking. I think there would be, you know, flooding, you know, that prevent flooding. And, yeah. We we know the wall is not a historical uh, structure. <laughs> Because that, because the first street project, they had to investigate everything, and they told us the wall is not historically significant. So, well, that's good. Yeah. Over, like, <laughs> how much is, how much is it really used, or how many people actually? I know on the Fourth of July for the fireworks and that, it's usually full, mm -hmm. but otherwise you don't see anybody in there. Well, this would be a this, new. This is a, this is going to be new, right? My understanding of what you're saying. We we do have some concept stuff that we can. This is where the big tower, right? Yeah. You said so right what? now it's a it's a concrete slab that's kind oh, of okay, chain right link, chain it's link, and it's kind of brushy oh, and brown. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And if you look, I think you'd be looking right down at the, at the, the rapids. Rapids, yeah. Mm. In that area, okay. Because I was thinking of you know up on the street where the old so school there, used to be. There's nothing firm, I guess, is how it's going to no, look. No, it's it's still there's some concepts yeah. floating around, and um, that was how the, the number was derived uh, for a dollar value. But mm. it, it's an idea to fix that area up when we're doing first. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I was going to say. Is yeah. that we're going to have a yeah. ni nice road the there, already done. That yeah. uh, to do do what we can in the park to, to fin fix that mm -hmm. up. And then the last one is um, we is East Grand third to eighth. That would be uh, consultant design money of our. It's a eighty twenty match. Uh, we turn that in as an STP urban project. We're hoping to get the money and start in twenty fourteen. So we budgeted um, part of our share there. Uh, sidewalk outlay is. Um, our hey, sidewalk. Can we just back up there? Sure. I got the right the third. Third to eighth, um, didn't our plans at one time have a, for a roundabout up there too? Right. So I'm on the right spot anyway. Yeah, right, right, by, the, right by the library. Is right, the, right, the top of the or, hill or somewhere in there. Yeah, our waterfront uh, plan that we have, it has three roundabouts in it. One over here at 6th Avenue uh, by the courthouse that we're building and then one by the library. So that would include it in this project. That that's included, I guess, in what the price is. Right in the design. Yeah. Sixth Avenue. Sixth Avenue, West Jackson, West Grand, out here. That that's a proposed one. That would be the last one we take. In back at. in back at City Hall. Right yeah. out here. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> right. We don't have a schedule on that one. It just was that one was proposed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be all over. <laughs> you know, and, and with that, Dave, would there be any acquisition? I guess of. Mean by the library? Well, this one, the library, I, there is, I think, but yeah, when we know we ever get to this one, I, it, what goes through my mind is there uh, probably the parking, the parking lot. If we're going to redo that in yeah. back here, is it going to in a few years be? Oh up? yeah, we'll we'll, <laughs> we'll throw a we'll because when we planted trees there, we threw a, yeah. a roundabout template on it to move the trees out. So yeah, we'll take in that into account. What a preliminary design of our own so we don't have to redo the parking lot twice. And the one by the library there will, will be some acquisition. Right. Yeah, the, the preliminary plan is that private park will need some property from that. But once you get a roundabout designer in there, it may move because mm -hmm. by the courthouse, it was all over the place uh, yeah. and ended up going into the courthouse lawn. What, why is there going to be one near the library? I just can't see that be a heavy traffic. Area. Well, I can see these going this way. It's it, for our downtown plan. It's kind of a, a gateway. The plant, or the waterfront plan, says it's the roundabout is a gateway feature to our downtown. Okay. And and well, it also saves us money because well, before we had LEDs, we were running about five thousand a year for our traffic signals, oh. and that's dropped. I don't have an exact number. It's quite a bit less now, but roundabouts have 
you know, they have no electricity. No. And, and they're, well, I know a lot of people don't like them, but everybody, everything I've read is, is they're safer than a normal intersection because your type of accidents are side swipes, which you have very chan little chances of injury compared to a running a light and having a T-bone. And so they're safer and they're cheaper to, to operate. So I just thought it was a neutral spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see the design when it is done, to see where it is proposed. Yeah. Spot. Well, what they, what they want for that lot, that uh, empty lot there, that's going to cost some money to get your piece that you want. And probably. Well, we we always have to, the city, we can't bargain because of all the federal, yeah. federal laws. We have to pay everybody fair market mm -hmm. value for every piece of land we buy. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, um, let's see what goes to sidewalk. Um, sidewalk maintenance is now in the engineering. Tim moved that for just regular sidewalk maintenance. That's in, a, in the operations budget of the engineering budget. What we have in here is um, uh, our safe routes to schools by the, well, and Never free lunch, I guess. They, there's supposedly no um, uh, participation, but by the time we go through all the requirements that they have, we had to do a historical study, which we didn't know when we did the original budget. Um, we have additional right of way and additional construction costs that we'll be bu budgeting in there to, to finish off the Washington School. I'm still waiting for um, approval from the state so we can start. Um, right away acquisition. Mm -hmm. and I, Good luck. Yeah, that's always a fun. It took me a long time on First Street, so I'm sure Washington Street will take okay. quite a while. And then, and then there's in the back is uh, Joe's put together a, a write up on each project. You can read through how old they are and all that construction. Well, it's an interesting looking at uh, the years when things are put in and whatever. And you know, I think the ordinary person would be amazed at how long some of this stuff's been underground. Mm -hmm. uh, you start talking about 75 years, and I think our oldest 100 years, I mean, one was there or something. So, 110 years yeah, on water main, so I mean, the average guy out here wouldn't believe it. I don't think. It's still here from back then. I know when that uh, 17th Avenue project was done, how many years ago that was done. I know that's been under there for quite a few years. 17th Avenue South. North. North Okay. Yeah. yeah. From to the tracks. Sure. All right, uh, committee, do you have any questions, uh, Dave or Joe? I uh, I asked uh, to have this, I guess, put on our agenda to update us, I guess, on where where we are, uh, what's been looked at by the finance committee with the budget and that. So. Mm -hmm. I got there's two pieces to the budget. Oh, I okay, I got I give you the wrong sheet okay. there. You go. Yeah. So no, everybody's got the right sheet. Or the skin down. So just a quick update. Uh, First Street North, the contractor has uh, curb and gutter in, the road base is shaped up, and they were looking at paving. Tomorrow, uh, American Asphalt is in town. They just put the first layer down on Pepper Avenue today. Um, but due to the rain and stuff and potential rain tomorrow, I'm not sure if they'll make it to First Street or not. Um, but the contractor out there does think that probably by the end of next week or just into the following week, he'll be wrapping things up out there uh, for this construction season. Um, Pepper Avenue. Uh, 
they just paved the first layer. They've got a second lift of asphalt to put on that street. That pretty much wraps everything up. We've got a little bit of uh, dredging to do for the Romanski ditch. Um, that was something we were hoping to do in the spring, but we had to look for some endangered species or some. Yeah, Carner Blue Butterfly, I think it is, right, Dave? Yeah. Um, so I, I got pushed back till this fall because we had to wait till the flowers bloomed in June and July to they eat lupins. Mm -hmm. So if you have lupins, you're going to have Carner Blue Butterfly. Oh, I had one. Uh, third in uh, Third Street in East Jackson, we're we're uh, is that on there? I'm trying to find it. It's the, it's the traffic signal update. Mm -hmm. um, Bannard is, we've met with them out there. Um, they should be starting next week, um, redoing the traffic signals, making them traffic um, actuated, and then replacing that uh, would be the north northwest corner. We would take out the, the median traffic signal and the uh, Type two overhead and put the the arm like uh, these are smaller version of what they put in down at seventy three and thirteen. That's the new style of traffic signals now. It's the large arm with the the faces vertically over mm -hmm. the traffic lanes. So we reason we were doing it is because of the semis get caught in there and knock our signals over all the time. So we. <laughs> That we upgrade at least one one quadrant of the intersection to the, the new type signal and then stop the knockdown. Okay, anything else, guys? I guess that takes care of item nine. <coughs> item 10 is the review and referral list. And I don't think we can take any off. Um, beer, no, could we? Oh, yeah. I saw that yeah. when we started the meeting, and I guess skipped right over it. Yeah. Yeah, item uh, referral number 10 from 2013. Let's remove that. All right. And with that, I guess we're item 11, and that's. Uh, I have a couple of oh, questions. Oh. Yep. One, um, we talked at one of the common council meetings and we talked about here where someone wanted a variance for a uh, duplex driveway. Mm -hmm. And if I recall, I think it's 36 feet and they want it to be 39 or 40. And I wonder, and we talked about should it, if you do have a driveway or a duplex, should we just make it 39 or 40 for any? For anybody putting in a, a, a driveway like that, so I don't know. Should that be part of our discussion? I think so we're going to take that up. That's uh, yeah, it's on the that's referral technically list. on yeah. the referral list uh, yeah. to look at. Um, okay. And then that alley too. For the yeah. Next time we yeah, I wrote that down to propose that. For next okay. All right. If there's nothing else, committee, I guess we're at. Point to adjourn. Yeah. Do you have anything to do with the, the things that they brought out for the flowers and that they put in the commercial or the residential areas? And now I see that those things are taken in. Oh, the, the um, yeah, you know, on West Grand. Yeah. I, what I understood is the um, gardening group. I don't know exactly which one it was that that we're supposed to take care of West Grand between. The river and Fourth Avenue disbanded or didn't want to take care of them, so then there was nobody to take care of them. So they're out in the on um, the next piece of West Grand between the expressway and 25th Avenue and, and Chad World's ward. Mm -hmm. uh, he got the individual businesses to take care of. Them. Yeah, on, on now the they're floor. picked up though. They're gone. Yeah, they're probably done back at the garage. Then I'd have to check with the garage guys. I can't see why they would take them back in there, and I. 
And when they put them where they put them, I can't see where they put them there. And they were supposed to be for the city, and they run res or commercial property. They should be put in the medium where all the other cities have their decorations. Yeah, we on on west on that section of West Grand, the, the boulevard's too too yeah, narrow. Yeah, but they could have went on the expressway, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. they could have put them in a different location. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, and they could use them now for Christmas decorations or Thanksgiving decorations, and now they've taken them down already. Yeah, I'd I'd have to check with the street Did the businesses. It, they they offered to uh, purchase the the flowers, right? Right. That's yeah, my understanding. Yeah. And they had a sign something that they could put them on their property. Okay. Yeah. Oh, limited, yeah. temporary limitations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I can't see why they were there. At, uh, well, that may be something, Marion, to have brought up at some committee to, to look at. Mm -hmm. You go to any other town. Yeah. And they got Get their... Attractive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now they got the Christmas tree stuck in it, and, you know, made them pretty for Christmas, and now ours are gone. That's just my problem. No, oh, it's, it's a good problem. I mean, I understand. <laughs> yeah. And, now they, and then they got those, it must be for uh, waste of clothes or, or cigarettes or something on that they got set on the side of the sidewalks now. Oh, yeah. That that was the original ones that we bought with, with the planters. But, yeah. Oh. So those are still out there. Yeah, they're still the, out there. But the planters, nobody volunteered to take care of them, so that's why they were used on, on mm -hmm. another section of mm -hmm. West Grand. I just well, wonder how often those are empty. <laughs> they're not used. I don't think they're used very much. You can adjourn. No, I just, just before, I guess just before we adjourn, though, and I didn't do it at the start, I'd like to uh, thank the newspaper for showing up to cover us and also River City's Community Access for televising this and showing it on a tape delay basis over the next couple of weeks and that, too. So thank you to them. With that, then I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Also move. I'll second that. We have a motion and second to adjourn. All those in favor respond by aye. 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 Opposed? Ayes have it. The meeting's adjourned at, I guess, what, 7 11.